Boris Karloff on Inner Sanctum Mystery. Brought to you by the makers of Carter's Pills. Good evening, friends. And let me welcome you once more to the Inner Sanctum. This is Raymond, your host. Come in, won't you, and sit down? No, no, I'm not being polite. I'd prefer you to sit, you see. Because within the next five minutes, you're going to be so weak in the knees that you won't be able to stand. <laughs> Inner Sanctum Mysteries again has the pleasure of bringing you the famous star of radio, screen, and stage, now featured in the current Broadway success, Arsenic and Old Lace, Boris Karloff. This evening, Mr. Karloff appears in Robert Newman's dramatization of Edgar Allan Poe's famous story, The Telltale Heart. Presented for your entertainment by the makers of Carter's Little Liver Pill, the best friend to your sunny disposition. And now our story. A story based on a tale by the greatest master of the macabre that ever lived. Edgar Allan Poe. The story of a man who could hear not only every sound on earth, but uh, even things that don't exist. So, turn down the light, call in a friend or neighbor to keep you company, and listen to Boris Karloff as Simon in a telltale heart. It's early evening. The sun is just setting behind a range of low hills. On top of the nearest hill is a huge rambling building surrounded by park-like grounds. A road winds from its gates down to the little village below. Down this road comes a man. He's tall, gaunt, his hair snow white. He's so busy with his spot that he doesn't see the small dark man who sits by the roadside. But just as he is about to pass him... Good evening. Huh? Oh, why, good evening. Nice evening, isn't it? Nice? Why, it's the most wonderful, perfect evening. I'll ever know this side of heaven. You don't say. And you can't know what it's like to feel as if you've just risen from the dead. As if your tomb was open. And you were told that you could return to the world that you knew and loved. Can't I? You can't. You see, my name is Simon. I was a musician. Two years ago, I went stone deaf. Suddenly. Completely. Do you know what deafness means to a musician? It's like dying. Or worse. Like dying and knowing that you're dead. Oh, I went to doctors, but they could do nothing for me. And, but finally, one of them sent me to see the doctor who has the place up on the hill here. Dr. Adair? Yes. Dr. Adair. He kept me with him for six months, and now... Now I'm going home again. He cured you? You can hear? Hear? Listen. Listen hard, and tell me what you can hear right now. Nothing very much. The wind. Cricket. <laughs> Cricket and the wind. Do you know what I can hear? I can hear the grass growing, the sap rising in the trees. I can hear the stars moving in their courses. I can hear things that no man ever heard before. Now, do you know why I said that this was the most wonderful evening that ever was? Yes, Simon. But I knew why before. You see, I just left the place up on the hill myself. You left there? You mean... When I was taken there... I was blind. Oh, your eyes, yes. I, I hadn't noticed before, but they are strange. Shall we walk on together? Simon? Uh, just where did you plan to go? Well, I've been thinking about that for weeks now. All the weeks when I couldn't leave my room. I must get used to being able to hear again. Gradually. From my window, I could see an old mill... Just this side of the village. Yes, it's, it's deep in the woods, deserted. There's moss on the water wheel. 
and the door hangs open by one hinge. You mean that, that you can see it from here? My eyes have become as good as your hearing. You thought of going there, living there? For a while, until I was ready to return to the world. Oliver, why don't you come with me? Then when we are both ready, we can go back together to the world. Yes. I could do that. Think of what it's going to mean, how much we're going to be able to help people. You with your sight and I with my hearing. Help them? <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. All right, Simon. We'll go to your old mill. This way, Oliver. Up this path. What? What? Someone's coming. The farmer. He, he seems to be looking for something. Good evening. I'm looking for my cow. Have you seen her? Well, what kind of a cow is she? A brown and a white one with a crooked horn. Wait. I hear her. She's grazing in a field on the other side of the woods. Hear her? That's almost a mile from here. I have good ears. Good. You must have ears like a fox. But that field, that's the squire's. How did she get there? You think someone took her? Who would? Well, it's the squire's land, but he's the richest man around here. Why should he have taken my cow? Wait a minute. Ah, let me see. Yes. Yes, I do see someone with your cow. He's just leaving her. You, you can see that? Right through the woods? I have good eyes. Who is it? What's he like? Is he tall, wearing a brown jacket? Yes. I knew it. It's the squire. He's trying to steal my cow. I'd better go get her. Thank you very much. Perhaps I'll see you both again. Perhaps. We'll both be staying around here for a while there in the old mill. Why did you tell him that, Oliver? Did you really see the squire taking his cow? I saw what he wanted me to see. What do you mean? He hates the squire because the squire's rich and he's poor. But, but what? Never mind, Simon. Shall we go on to the mill? Here we are. And it's just the way I knew it would be. Quiet, peaceful, no noises, just sound. And even those are dulled by the waterfall. Yes, it's just the way I knew it would be, too. Dark, dank, the home of the rats and spiders. We'd be happy living here with them. Happy with rats and spiders? Why? Because they're like me. Rats see in the dark. And spiders spin webs. I don't understand you, Oliver. Must you always see the worst, the most evil side of everything? Always. But why? Don't you love people? Don't you think that this is a good world? A good world when I was blind for more than two years? But whose fault was that? What difference does that make? I was blind. And did anyone care that I was? No. Love people? I hate them. But, Oliver, that's wrong. You've no right to hate anyone or anything. What's that? It just sounds like wings, like... Yes, there it is, there. A swallow. Why, it's frightened, trying to get out. Why, it's beating itself against the wall and... Oh, poor thing, it, it's hurt itself. Fallen to the ground. I'd better catch it. Is it badly hurt? No, I, I don't think so. Oh. Just this one wing. Uh, let's see. Perhaps we can uh, put a splint on it, heal it. Do you think so? Here. Here, Oliver. But be gentle. It's still terribly frightened. I will. I will. Oh, Oliver! What are you doing to doing the bird? Doing blood, you... Why, you crushed the swallow. Killed it. Why, so I have. You... You killed it deliberately. You think so? I told you we all have some badness deep inside us. Even you. Here you are ready to believe the worst of me, that I'd wantonly crush her, a harmless little sparrow to death and... Simon. What is it? I... I don't know, but there's something in your face. 
something that wasn't there before. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going up to bed. Simon! Simon, wait! It wasn't he that was blind. It was I, I. Oh, he is bad, evil, clean through. He's like one of the spiders he loved so much, lurking here and spinning cunning webs to catch innocent people in. And what he saw in my face just now, there was something there. Something that wasn't there before. Death. Why did this have to happen to me? I was so happy just a little while ago. I loved everyone, the whole world. And now... Now I have to kill him. And here I am, friend. Raymond, your host in the Inner Sanctum. Who also loves everyone. So, Simon has decided he must murder his companion. Not because he wants to, but in order to keep him from spreading the hate and evil he seems to love. <laughs> That's a charming idea. But, if Oliver's eyes are as good as he says they are, good enough to see death in Simon's face, how will he be able to do it, hmm? Quite a problem, isn't it? Well, Raymond, everyone has problems. It's the answer that counts. It certainly does, Mr. Hurley, in a mystery drama. Yes, and in a domestic drama, too. If you don't believe it, listen to what Agnes Vale says to her husband at the dinner table. Oh, Bob, you haven't said a word about the cake, and I baked it especially for your birthday. After 30, no one wants to be reminded of birthdays. Oh, that's silly. Besides, the person's only as old as they feel. Well, if that was the case, I'd be about 60. You mean 90. No one could save up the grouch you've got in only 60 years. If you felt as irritable, low, and out of sorts as I have lately, you'd be grouchy, too. Of course I would. Anybody would. So the thing to do is not to feel that way. What can anyone do about it? Very simple, my dear. Try Carter's Little Liver Pills. Right. And when you don't feel good, try Carter's Little Liver Pills. They do the work of caramel but have no caramel in them. For they are simple pills made of vegetable drugs. They wake up the flow of one of our most vital digestive juices. When this vital juice flows at the rate of two pints a day, it helps to digest our food and bring back the glorious feeling that goes with regularity. Then most folks feel like happy days are here again. But be sure you get the genuine Carter's Little Liver Pill. Well, friends, are you sorry I advised you to sit down before? No, I thought not. You still want me to go on with the story of the Telltale Heart? Very well. It's a little later that same evening... And Simon is sitting in the upper story of the old deserted mill, waiting, listening. Sleep, Oliver, sleep. Aren't you ever going to sleep? Oh, I know you're lying down. I heard you getting undressed. I even heard the thread snap when you pull that button off your shirt. But you're not asleep yet. I can tell by your breathing, the way your heart's beating. And that's what I must wait for. The time when you're really asleep. When you close those hawk eyes that can see even in the dark. That could read murder in my face when I didn't know it was there myself. Wait a minute. There. Now you're asleep. And now I must go. Easy with the door. Careful. And even more careful going down the stairs. Shh. Don't creak like that. Suppose he wakes. No, he can't. He won't wake up. He can't. And, and even if he does. Uh, here we are. The door to his room. How shall I do it? Those sacks he's using as a pillow. Well, I pulled them out and held them over his face and smothered him. That's it, yes. And then I wouldn't have to touch him. I wouldn't. Who's there? Who's there? There is someone there. I can see you. It's Simon. Yes, it's Simon. What do you want? What are you doing here? I know you've come to kill me. Yes, Oliver. I've come to kill you. Philip. 
You can't do that. You can't. You... Yes, Olive, oh, I can. And I have to. No, oh, please don't struggle like that. I'm stronger than you are. You can't get away from me. You can't. You can't. That noise. Hear it? It's your heart. Beating, pounding, driving the blood through your veins. It's beating more slowly now. Slower and fainter. Running down like a tired clock. And I'm not going to let you go until it's stopped. So don't struggle. Don't struggle, please. Just a few seconds more. Uh, I can hardly hear it now. Just a faint, throbbing murmur. Uh, and now, even that's gone. Yes, it, it stopped. And you're dead. Oliver, listen. I didn't want to do it. I didn't, but I had to. You were only interested in hurting people. That's why I had to do it. And that's why I'm not going to give myself up or confess that I killed you. Because I can still help people. You understand, don't you? That's why I must get rid of your body. Hide it somewhere. Oh, what am I to do with you? I know. I'll keep you here. Tear up the floor and hide you underneath it. Yeah. Let's see now. This, this crowbar. This one here, there. That should be big enough. And now, in you go. Goodbye, Oliver. Goodbye. Just put these boards back. Nail them down again with the same rusty nails. And, and it's done. Now I'll spread this dust over the cracks. No one will be able to tell what I've done. No, not even with your eyes. If you could still use them. What's that? A light. A lantern outside. Someone at the door. Maybe Christie's come back again. Yes? Who is it? It's Trent, the constable. The constable? What, what do you want? Oh, nothing much. Thought I'd drop in. Say hello. Come in, constable. Come right in. Thanks. Great time of night to be visiting, but I heard there were strangers living out here, and I thought I might... Why, of course. It's part of your job to investigate strangers, isn't uh -huh. it? Yeah, in a way. Not that you're a stranger, exactly. What do you mean? Well, you've been around here for some time, haven't you? Up at Dr. Dare's place in the hill, I mean. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I, I just left there this afternoon. Uh-huh. And your friend, where is he? Sleeping? Friend? Why, there's no one here with me. I'm all alone. Well, the doctor said. You mind if I look around? No, no, of course not. Not that I doubt your word or anything like that. Oh, no, but... don't apologize, Constable. Go right ahead. <laughs> Well, Constable? There's certainly no sign of anyone else. Well, I told you so. Yes, you did. Now, I'll just sit down here for a minute. My pipe's going. No, no, not there. Don't sit there. Why not? Because, uh... <laughs> well, it, it was just that the floor looked a little rotten right there, and, and I was afraid that... Oh, I, I guess it's all right. Sure. Strong enough to hold me, anyway. Don't stop it is. I pet you. Good heavens. What's that? That's what? That. That throbbing. That noise. Beating away like. I don't hear any noise. But you must, you. Ah. Uh, those ears of mine. Sometimes they're too good. It's, it's just your watch ticking. Watch? I haven't got a watch on me. You. You haven't? But then what? Oh, oh look, Constable. I, I could use a bit of exercise. Suppose I walk you back to the village. Well, that's mighty nice of you. You 
glad to have your company. But there's no hurry, is there? Just let's sit here for a while. And... I don't want to sit. Constable, will you come now? Now, this minute, if you don't, I'll have... I don't know what I'll do. Hey, you have gotten yourself into a state. Is anything the matter? Oh, no, no, of course not. It's... Oh, it's just that I get nervous, restless, and... You won't mind if I... If I walk up and down right here, will you? If it'll make you feel any better, go ahead. Thank you. This floor, it, uh, it is noisy, isn't it? It isn't noisy enough. Constable, this... This lever here, I, I've been wondering about it. What's it for, do you know? Oh, yes, I think it opens the sluice. Starts the mill wheel turning. It does, then. Then let's try it. See if it still works. There. Yeah, still works all right. It's better than I could do. Still not loud enough still. Constable, by heaven's sake, will you come now and leave here with me? If you don't, I will, I will go back. Hey, look, look, there's no need to get so excited. I think I'm not excited. I'm perfectly calm and quiet. Will you come now right away? But I told you. I know what you're doing. Sitting there, pretending you haven't heard, making me stay here and listen to it, beating louder and louder and louder. All right, I confess. I killed him. I killed him! His body is right underneath you, under the floor. I killed him! And that noise you hear is his heart. The beating of his telltale heart. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Adair. Oh, Constable, hello. Well, did you find them? Yes, Doctor. I'm glad. Some of my boys will be bringing the other one, Oliver, along in a little while. Bringing him? Is it matter with him? Well, sort of. They were in the old mill by the river. Simon had evidently tried to kill Oliver, but he hadn't done a good job of it. He nailed him up underneath the floor. And uh, when we got him out, he was unconscious. He's still pretty weak. I see, Ed. Bring Simon in, will you? Sure. All right, Simon. In here. Yes, Constable. Now, uh, turn him around so that he's facing me. That's it. Well, hello, Simon. Hello, Doctor. Simon, why did you run away from here this afternoon? Run away? I didn't run away. I left. What need was there for me to stay when I was cured? Oh, and uh, what you did, or uh, rather tried to do, to Oliver? Ah, uh, that was wrong. I know it was wrong, but but I had to do it. He was bad, Doctor, bad. He hated everyone, wanted to hurt them, and I couldn't let him. You know, it's strange, Constable. Two men, both mental cases because of a sudden affliction. But... While Oliver's blindness made him hate, Simon's deafness filled him with love for all mankind. Deafness? You mean he's deaf? But, but, but when you talk to him, he answers you. Yes, he reads lips. That's why I had you turn him around, so he was facing me. But he's stone deaf. He will never hear again. What's that you're saying? Deaf? But I'm not deaf. Why, there's no one can hear better than I, no one. I heard everything when I left here. Things no man has ever heard before. The song of the swan. The breathing of the fish. Why, I even heard the beating of Oliver's heart. After I'd killed him. Yes, Simon, of course. I'm not deaf, I tell you. I'm not. I'm not. So, Simon did hear all the things he said he did. Even the beating of the telltale heart. And not with his ears, but with something else deep inside his poor, sick brain. Uh, speaking of telltale hearts, 
I saw it's not hard to talk. Just Mr. Hurley, he's knees knocking together. And if you think you're kidding, Raymond, you're crazy. Oh, I'm not kidding, Ed. And Mr. Carlos' audiences, that's the equivalent of applause. Since everyone's generally much too scared to show the usual approval with their hands. So we won't take any chances. We'll just use words and say, Thanks, Boris Carlyle, for your splendid performance of tonight's dramatization of Poe's The Telltale Heart. It was a pleasure, Raymond, to be able to bring our friends one of the world's most famous stories. And I'm very grateful to Everett Sloan as Oliver and Santos Ortiaga, who played Christy, for the help that they gave me. So now, I suggest that you listen to Ed Hurley, who has some helpful advice for which you may be very grateful. This is Raymond again, your host, getting ready to close that door to the inner sanctum and say goodnight until the same time next week. Uh, in the meantime, if you care to do a little bloodthirsty reading, try this month's inner sanctum novel, I'll Eat You Last, by H.C. Brandon. Uh, in case you've already read that, why not try some of the other stories by the author of tonight's mystery drama, Edgar Allan Poe. According to all critics, this writer has quite a future. Have a good night. Pleasant dreams. Huh? Inner Sanctum Mysteries will be on the air again next Sunday night, same station, same time, with another chiller for thriller fans. So be with us then. This is Ed Hurley, speaking for the makers of Carter's Little Liver Pills and reminding you, when you don't feel good, try Carter's Little Liver Pills. The best friend to your sunny disposition. This is the Blue Network of the National Broadcasting Company.